Today I'm going to do my first ever oil change on the CF Moto C4600 and it's it's been three months we've had it for three months but this is the break-in oil change there's not many kilometers on it so there's 206 kilometers on the unit and 20.3 hours so in the manual it says do your break-in oil change at 20 hours or 300 kilometers. And 300 kilometers, that's about 200 miles. They round it off to that. So we're quite a ways from 300 kilometers, but we have the 20 hour mark. So today I'm going to do the oil change on it and I'll show you guys. And then this can be used as a reference that I actually did it. Today is September 10th, 2024. So for today's oil change, I'm going to use the CF Moto brand. I actually bought this kit when I bought the C4600. I thought oh, I might as well get one, you know, at the same time. Then I'll have it here when I need it. So it's all CF Moto, the full synthetic oil, 5W40. There's the oil filter CF Moto. It comes with a new O-ring and some washers there. So I thought I would go with the brand name because I know you probably could get it cheaper aftermarket, but the filter is going to fit right and the oil's right for the machine. And it's $100 Canadian uh, with tax. So I might as well get the good stuff. So for today's oil change, you need a 17 millimeter socket for the oil drain bolt. And I'm using this torque wrench. I got this a while back because for jobs like this, I've been doing the oil changes in my cars. This is excellent because a little longer bar, you get more, like the smaller ones, like you wouldn't try one like this, but the little bigger ones than this, you just don't have enough torque to undo it if they're so tight. But this gives you extra leverage, so, and it's also a torque wrench. So when I put them back on, the oil change bolt, it says in, in, the, in the manual here, it says to 18.4 foot-pounds. So I've seen other videos where guys say 25, 22, it's like you hear different numbers. So I would recommend guys, go buy your manual. Don't go by us telling you, because maybe you have a different machine that maybe the older ones, they torque them more, I don't know. But for 2023, C4600, the one I'm doing the oil change today, it says 18.4. And this one here is an eight millimeter to take off the oil filter cover. This is, a, you torque that back on to 7.3 foot pounds. You imagine that's, that's not much at all. So you want to be careful when you put that. So this is suited for that. And I don't have a torque wrench for that, but I'll just put them on snug, but I won't over tighten them. So, but anyways, always go by your manual guys. Like we have a 2023, but this might apply to other years too, but go by your book that you got with your machine. And if you don't have one, like you've bought it used from someone, they don't have the manual. Go online and look for your model. You can download those manuals online and then you can see all the specs there. So let's start the oil change. What I like about the quad here is I don't got to jack it up. It's up high enough that I can reach under there because the drain bolt isn't very, see where the pan is there, the drain pan. So you can see it right there. It's a 17 millimeter bolt and I have it ready on the socket. So Actually, I pre-loosened it already. It was really, it wasn't that hard. With that uh, torque wrench I showed you, no problem. So before we drain the oil, let's take out the dipstick. Now this here just pops off here. And then you gotta pull this out. It kind of slides in. It has some grooves there. There's the dipstick. We'll just take it out and then let the oil flow through better when we Take the bolt out. I'll loosen that bolt now. Make sure the pan's under there. Try not to drop the bolt in the <laughs> oil pan. Sometimes it can happen. What's in there pretty good. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't look too dirty, but it's only 20 hours, so that's why it would look good. But you have to do this, so. And then, 
Here's your bolt. I'll wipe this off. Looks pretty good. I don't see no metal on there, like sticking to it. And the washer looks good, but I think I'll change it anyways. And then just keep this one. Just so, you know, I can document this for, for the warranty purposes that I changed everything. I'm going to put a new crush bolt or washer on there. So we'll let that drain for a bit and then we'll clean this up and then put it back. So I cleaned off the drain bolt. You can use some brake cleaner for that if you want. But it looks in really good shape, everything. I mean, the unit is fairly new yet. And this, I'm sure guys that would take off their bolt and see that the washer looks this good, they wouldn't change it. But I'm, I'm going to do it. Take the new one out of the package here. And put that new one. And I'll save this one. This one looks pretty good. But this one here I've just put on is brand new. And we want to seal that up properly and there'll be no leaks. So it looks nice and clean now and I got that new washer. So let's go install that. So it's all drained out guys. I'm just wiping around there. You want to make sure it's clean. I checked it actually before I before I even loosened it, I did wipe it. I gave this this quad a nice bath. I like to keep it clean. My neighbor said, you're gonna get scratches on it and, you know, be prepared. I said, I know all that. Like you go through a bush and you scratch it. It's, you know, that's fine. But I wanna keep it nice and clean and and do the maintenance and everything and keep it in good shape. This could last for years if you look after it. And getting all the mud off and everything now and then, that's good too. You don't want it all just sitting on there caked. So now I'm going to torque that bolt. I got it set to what the book says. Take that off and fit it on first. Let's see. 18 and a half foot pounds. When I hear a click, Oh, there's the click. Yeah, the torque wrench clicks when it reaches its value. So now it's on there good. And make sure when you're threading it, it goes in nicely. I first I did it by hand. If you feel any friction or restriction, take it out and redo it. Because if you cross thread it, you're going to have a problem. So I pre-loosened those, those bolts with an 8 millimeter, And they weren't too snug. They were a little snug. So I don't have a torque wrench, so I'll know. It's good when you loosen them with this, you know how tight they were. So they were on there pretty good, but not. you're not gonna just really torque them. So I'm gonna stuff a rag in here because I've seen videos where guys do this and they said, yeah, the oil goes all over the place. So let's just stuff something in here. Like that maybe. This is an old rag that I use for wiping stuff like, like this, so. And I have the pan underneath. The pan's there also. So we'll just take these off by hand. And I got a little uh, lunch baggie here to put the filter in. <laughs> the used filter. Good to have a magnet around too, like if you drop a bolt or something. You can just put your magnet in there and it'll stick to it. Okay. It's going to come off and it's going to be a little messy. Yeah, see? There's the cap. I'm going to change the O-ring too. They say if it's nice and round, like this one feels good, that you don't have to maybe, but I think I will anyway. I have it, so I might as well. This should pop right out. Yeah. Put it in the baggie. <laughs> and it's not going to make a big mess all over the place. Yeah, 
I just let that drip a bit. And do have the pan underneath. And I also have the, the rag here. And I have the plastic sheet. So you don't get a bunch of oil all over the place. Like you think, oh, it's not bad. I'll just wipe it up. But, you know, it's... You do this with cars and everything, next thing you got oil spots all over your garage. And so I like to put the plastic sheet. You can even buy small cheap tarps. Just use it for that. When you're changing oil, put that underneath your vehicle. Or This is much easier than changing the... I did a couple cars. I didn't film it or nothing, but I did my cars. Because I thought, oh, I want to know what kind of oil I'm putting in and filters and, and make sure it's done. And you, you feel... You feel good when it's done because you know you did it. Like if you pay someone and take it to the garage and the guy doesn't put the oil and he thinks your oil is clean enough, who knows? Plus convenience. We live in the middle of nowhere. I just can't drive my car into a, a place and, and uh, get the oil changed. So here's the new filter. Doesn't it look nice? <laughs> And it only goes in one way. This uh, big opening here will go straight in. But I'm going to go get a little oil and rub a bit on here, this rubber here, so it seals good in there. There. And I'll just stick that in. And it snaps right in there like it doesn't snap, but it fits in nice. I've seen some videos of aftermarket ones and they don't, they're falling, right? They're not, but this is a CF Moto filter, so it'll fit good. So I'm just going to clean this cap off, guys, and then I'll put the new O-ring and then we'll put it back. There's the new O-ring. There's the one that was on there. So I'll just, I clean this with some brake cleaner. Put this around. Put a little, I'll put a little oil around it too. So I'm documenting this so I can show the dealer where I bought it that I did change the oil because you know that's, that's a big thing with warranties if you don't change it. I know a guy from Saskatoon, he he was working at a quad dealership. They were selling quads and side-by-sides. And he said people would bring them in and they've never changed the oil. They never changed the air filter. They just drive them around, you know, when they run out of gas, they put gas. And he said they were in such lousy shape and they wanted to trade it in for a new one. He said they were, they were sending them to the junkyard, basically. Yeah, they were older, but they never looked after them. And then he said he's seen ones they're really old and in such a good shape. People that change the oil and change the air filters and the fluids and the differential oil. He said they, they had tons of miles, but they were in good shape. So it always pays to maintain your machines, right? It really does. So now I'm not going to over torque these. Get them all even. Like nice and snug, but don't don't get crazy with it. Like I said, this is not 7.3 torque foot pounds. That's not much. Of course, we're gonna run this after we put the oil in and we'll we'll be looking for leaks. Like you do that with anything, your car or truck. I think that's good. So now it's time for the good stuff. And in the manual it says 2.8 liters. This is 3 liters here, so you'll almost pour it all in. And I double checked the drain bolt after I showed you I put it on. I, I did it, checked it again to make sure. And I'm going to recheck these uh, oil filter bolts too right away. Always good to keep checking because you don't want a bunch of oil coming on the ground, right? <laughs> I 
Last one. I won't put it all, but almost all of it. I checked the drain bolt. I'm going to check the oil filter bolts. Then I'm going to start it up. I'll open the garage door here. It'll run for a couple minutes and then check the level. There. Got a little bit left. But it says 2.8, so I'm not going to put it anymore. And there's that filter in the, in the bag. There's a lot of oil in it. <laughs> Use a little lunch bag. I use that for my car filters, too. They fit in nicely. Now we'll screw this back in for now. And we'll check it after. They say when you check the oil, you just pull it out and then put it back into the threads. You don't turn it. You don't turn it all the way in. But for now, I'm going to close it up good because I'm going to be running it. I'll just double check these again. Good. 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 Okay. Okay, guys, I'm just going to open the door and then I'll show you <laughs> when it's running and then we'll check it after that. Guys, I'm just going to push it out and I'll start it outside. There's the pop. <laughs> He's always guarding. Look, wants to play. After I'm done this video. She always barks when I fire it up. So we'll just let it run for a bit. Warm it up. Then I'll check that level. Isn't that a nice looking unit, guys? Just over 200 kilometers on it. This is for the, for the dealer, too. Prove I did it. Why wouldn't I do it? I'm proud to do it. I changed the oil on this vehicle. 2007 Focus. Nice clean oil in there too. It's not showroom clean, but it's pretty close. I cleaned it up nice. So I'm gonna check it now. I let it run for a few minutes and I let it sit for a few minutes. Let it settle. So take it out. Wipe it off with a clean paper towel. You don't want to get no debris in there. Now to check it, you just line it up to the threads, but you don't screw it in. It's sitting right on the threads. Excellent. The level's good. I put in exactly what it needs. There's a little bit of oil left in the last container, but that's okay. This is reading in that we're supposed to. So tighten that up and I'll put this cover back on. It's ready to go, ready to go quadding again. <laughs> One more thing I forgot to mention. Where do you put this dirty oil? Since we've got a big, big farm here, lots of land, I'll just whip it behind the shed here. Who's gonna know, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I wonder, some of you are probably thinking, oh my god, is he really saying that? <laughs> Cringe material. No, I'm going to put it back in those bottles. And then I'm going to recycle it, take it to, to a facility that takes used oil. So, no, never throw your oil in the ground or down a sewer or whatever, whatever you're thinking or in the garbage, you know. Recycle it. Now, this cover... I could imagine in the winter, these things are gonna get pretty stiff. And when you're snapping these back in, they could break. So maybe shoot a little WD-40 on these. And these slide in here. You gotta slide these. Easy to talk. <laughs> slide it like that. And then push. Yeah, they they slide in that way, like they go in like. A, but if you if you lube them, they'll be easier. And then when it's colder out, things won't be snapping. You know when it gets colder right away they break off. There's a lot of plastics on this machine. 
that could snap. So use a little WD-40 or some lubricant that you like.